A few years ago, we talked to our colleagues in the science department, the nursing department, allied health department, and actually various other departments. And we said, you know, if you have your students take statistics, what's the number one thing you want them to understand? And across the board, the first um, answer out of their mouths was p-value. We want them to understand p-value, understanding statistical significance. It's the number one most important thing. Therefore, you can imagine it's going to be very important and we're going to stress it. So let's explore a little bit more about statistical significance and p-value in these next couple examples. Now remember that statistical significance means getting to reject the null hypothesis. Your goal is to reject the null hypothesis. That's what you want. That is statistical significance. All right, that means you want a low p-value because if your p-value is low, then you get to reject H0. So you want a low p-value, or you certainly want it to be lower than alpha. Hmm. Okay, so let's look at these values. If your p-value is 0 0.06 and your alpha, oh see, is that statistically significant at the 0 0.10 level? See that? 0 0.10 level, that's alpha. That's what they're talking about right there. So this is saying alpha. Alpha is 0 0.10. And then they're saying I have a p-value of 0 0.06. Is that statistically significant or not? Well, statistical significance means I get to reject H0, right? So if I want it to be statistically significant, what I want to know is do I get to reject H0? Well, 0 0.06 is less than 0 0.10. So yes, you would get to reject H0, which means the answer for this is yes. It is statistically significant because statistically significant means I get to reject, reject H0. All right, what if my p-value was still 0 0.06, but my alpha was 0 0.05? Well, that is not less. So you put a big slash through it because it's not less than 0 0.05. Or if you like, you can do a greater than sign, whichever way makes you happy. So this would be no. That is not statistically significant because you do not reject H0. Right, so it is not statistically significant. Sorry, those are two words. I know it merged together like one. There, I couldn't abide that, so <laughs> I had to change that. So this one's a yes statistically significant because you got to reject H0. This one's not statistically significant because we did not get to reject H0. So then would a p-value of 0 0.04 be more statistically significant than a p-value of 0.06? Well, I think it's going to be important to understand what more statistically significant means. More statistically significant means we would reject H0 for more alpha values. Right? And the answer to this is yes, right? It's going to be a yes. Now let me explain why. 0 0.04 is more significant. Why? Let me let me give you an example of an alpha. If your p-value is 0 0.04 and alpha was 0.05, you would get to reject H0, right? So if alpha is 0.05, we reject H0 with this one. But if alpha is 0.05, alpha, sorry, alpha 0.05, for this p-value right here of 0.06, we would not get to reject H0. Same alpha value, this one would reject, this one would not. That's why this one's more statistically significant. 
right? We would reject for more alpha values. So for example, if alpha is 0 0.10, both of these reject. If alpha is 0 0.09, both of these reject H0. If alpha is 0 0.08, both reject. Alpha 0 0.07, both reject. Alpha 0 0.06, uh-uh. This one over here does not reject H0, whereas this one does. Alpha 0.055, this one does not reject H0, but this one does. Alpha 0.05, well, we just did that one, right? So this p-value is higher, so it's rejecting for less values of alpha. This p-value is lower, so we're rejecting for more values of alpha. So that is more statistically significant. I get to reject H0 more often with a lower p-value, which leads to a very important note. You want p-values to be low. The lower, the better. Because if they're lower, then that means that's more statistically significant and you would get to reject H0 more often. If your p-value is low, you get to reject H0. Reject H0. So when your p-value is low, you reject H0 and you want to reject H0, right? Which you want to do. <laughs> Right? You want statistical significance. You want to reject H0. And you'll only get to do that if your p-value is low. And that's why you want the lowest p-value you can get. Right? You want your p-value to be low, the lower the better. Because if your p-value is low, you'll get to reject H0. And that's your whole goal, is to reject H0 because you want statistical significance. Statistical significance means getting to reject that null hypothesis. And you'll get to do that if your p-value is low. All right, so let's suppose, oh, and star that. Oh, star that. That's a big deal right there, what we just did, right? This whole page, you can just star the whole page. It's all important, right? So statistical significance is rejecting the null. If your p-value is low, you get to reject the null. That's statistically significant. So the lower the p-value, the better for you, et cetera. All right, so taking that into account, suppose, and I'm sorry, this got cut off by my writing a little bit. Suppose you had a significance level of, or excuse me, a level of significance of 0 0.10. That's your alpha right there. See that? That's alpha. They're giving you an alpha. So your alpha is 0 0.10. Sorry, that's an equals. All right, which of the following p-values would be statistically significant? Okay, that means you would get to reject H0, right? So statistically significant means I get to reject H0. And you just circle the ones that would apply. Okay, so 0 0.09 would get circled because that p-value is less than alpha. When p-value is less than alpha, you get to reject H0. I would not circle 0 0.11, that's not less than. 0 0.10 is not less than. 0 0.01 is less than. 0 0.009 and 0 0.0092. So those four are all less than that alpha, so therefore all of them would reject H0. Now, which one's the most statistically significant? Hmm. Well, remember what we just said. More significant means you get to reject for more values. In other words, it's the lowest p-value. So when you want the most statistical significance, you want the lowest p-value. I reiterate what I wrote here. P-value is low, the lower the better, right? So you want the lowest p-value, right? Which would be 0 0.009. 0 0.009, 0 .009, this one, is the lowest p-value out there. Therefore, it's the most significant. 9.2 has got a little 2 on the end, so it's a little bit bigger than this one, which is 9.0 technically on the end. So the lowest p-value because it would reject H0 for the most values of alpha. Right? So whatever alpha is, it's much more, <laughs> um, alpha can be all sorts of different values, although we set it up to be 0 0.10 at the start. But if I let alpha be all sorts of different things, this one is the one that would reject H0 the most. So it's the most statistically significant because it's the lowest p-value out there. Now, this is actually a little bit more of a chapter 11 question. I'm kind of setting you up for this. One of those p-values is not like the others. There's one of them that's listed that probably indicates you did something wrong. You made an error in how you ran the test. Do you see which one it is? It's 0.992, this one. 
So the p-value of 0.992. Think about what that means for a second. Your p-value is the area in your tail. This is a normal distribution, the z-curve. The area underneath the whole thing is 100%. So you're telling me that you would shade 99.2% of this curve. That's probably meaning you did something wrong, right? P-values are generally small. They're generally the areas in the tails because they're the probability of a fluke, right? And this is not a fluke. This is 99% likely, which means that is not an unusual value. So I just wrote that up. That p-value is very high. Um, remember that a p-value is the probability of a fluke. It's the area in the tail or tails. So it tends to be small values. And this p-value is very, very high. So probably the most likely culprit is that h1 is wrong. That's the most likely item, is that you went the wrong way. You went left-tailed instead of right-tailed, or right-tailed instead of left-tailed, or something like that. That's usually the most common mistake that's made to make a p-value that's that high. So if you end up with a p-value, honestly, bigger than 0.5, um, try switching out your H1. Right? I'll even write that as well. There, I just made a little note. If you get a p-value greater than 50% for a one-tailed test, try reversing the sign in H1. Now, if it's a two-tailed test, um, there's other problems. <laughs> but if it's a one-tailed test, then this is the most common thing that happens, especially in Chapter 11. So this is going to become important to us in Chapter 11. Try going the other way. Try reversing your sign from a less than to a greater than or vice versa.